so I'm recording here okay so I want to update everybody on where we are um, with respect to the steam camps uh, so I've been pretty much busy um, yeah all this time just continuing to get more people on board if you look at the documents I sent you there's a whole bunch of people now that are involved and it's kind of slow though and definitely taking more time than I thought uh, but moving along and the latest that I actually came up with was since it is difficult like the amount of curriculum that we have while everything is proven it's it's also such that there's a lot of integration and what I'm gonna do is actually do very clear uh, specifications that would be sent out for bidding like if there's any tasks that are still outstanding and so we're working on some of the things right now um, some people on a team are working actively on uh, different aspects um, but there's a lot and if we're gonna get this on schedule like if we wanted to do early like January or February build, uh, or workshop then we need to keep on schedule and for that um, I'm doing a requ I'm gonna do a request for bids essentially for everybody uh, one to like for the people on the team already to to get very clear about what the requirements are how it fits with the rest of the rest of the products uh, with the, with the whole package and then also for external people and so I am gonna look for for money for that uh, so if we need to do some other things um, that are just still outstanding then we can do that uh, part of the work is uh, we did want to install actually like a um, for the overall development process to install I mean forums so that's discourse uh, we you know we had a forum a long time ago but we're gonna revive that as part of the steam camps and moving forward into 2020 and also um, a stack exchange like platform so I think that the open source version of that is AskBot and uh, but basically like a question and answer thing where we can distill technical uh, technical content readily uh, just basically upvoting answers so so the kind of the stack exchange kind of a, a thing um, where we are able to distill information faster um, so that's kind of like the main main update for me but maybe like what what I'd like to do is uh, in this agenda for today introduce what all the people are doing just kind of a little bit of updates and then uh, maybe questions maybe start with questions like what are the questions uh, on this whole program um, so anyone have any questions at this time because I want and then I wanted to introduce uh, all of us uh, as far as what everybody on the team here is working on questions from anyone on, on what's going on and the latest progress and uh, anything else hey Martin is it Chris hey, uh, yeah Chris go ahead Oh, so I was uh, I have sort of some specific questions. I'm not uh, sure um, uh, uh, where they go. Uh, in general, in general um, terms, I I I am on the same page. I, I believe I understand uh, the, the strategy and protocol. It's going to take me a minute to adapt the protocol, obviously. But um, for so, like for example, um, just one question I have is the the, the simple extruder that I'm. Um, uh, I wanted to. I wanted to work on. Uh, I've been working on. I've been printing out and uh, working on both the the D three D simple extruder and then also the extruder on that machine. And then there was another simple extruder that you also made. So I have like specific uh, um, questions about uh, how the best way to go about that. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've used the simple extruders on printers before, but this time around we're gonna just. We didn't make them. We just bought them off the shelf. So. And here, this time around, it's going to be about printing them and building them more from scratch. So it's more of an educational exercise. But okay, yeah, I, what I'll do there is, um, it's been taking me some a bit of time to come up with all the kind of like like the specs, and that's because I kind of stepped back and went one step back. Okay, like let's get really clear for the whole team. Like, okay, there's all this internet infrastructure that we use and things that we've been using we got to teach everybody about how to do that and yeah. what that basic basic flow is so I'm, I'm preparing all of that um, to make it really transparent like for example the development spreadsheets going back to those 
and seeing how you know when we if we ask anybody to develop this and this is for the steam camps and for f any future pro projects um, the shift in my mind that's happening is okay let's actually use this much more and maybe focus like shift our work from this uh, volunteer kind of thing which I mean being negative about it doesn't really work the, the turnover is huge you know like typically unless you have a solid team so so I think what we can do and what we are doing next for next year is shifting towards the incentive challenges and then I think the request for bids kind of process could be a really good thing so if we have revenue coming in we can actually put up um, start you know start paying people for stuff according to a pretty nice open source bidding process we actually have some work on that on the wiki in fact I'm gonna send it to you over the show that in the chat box we, we did some work on this before um, but take a look at there's a presentation on this maybe you don't have to look at it now maybe look at it later uh, but we did some decent work on what kind of like an open source bidding process could look like to accept accelerate open source development so do take a look at that afterwards but yeah now that I got back into looking at that it's like wow that's a pretty powerful thing that can happen we never tested it so take a look at that um, and definitely we're testing the incentive challenges as a way to do it and then the steam camps as a way to to do the ongoing development so kind of just a bunch of new stuff and revamping the infrastructure for what we're doing. Chris, do I have another question you might have? Um, so, uh, I was getting a quick bit about um, uh, open comments on uh, uh, Marketplace that you were, had also been talking about, yeah. the potential means of bringing additional um, revenue into the uh, um, uh, both you know, in camps and outside of the camp. I think that, 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 that still has uh, a lot of potential. Sorry. Is that so? Is that something? I said. I so I think that that idea has a lot of potential. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Is Hold that down. something that you're talking about developing in tandem with this, or as a, yes. I mean, obviously, part of the same campus to fund, to, to, not to fund, but to funnel new products into that into that ecosystem, but and getting people interested in producing for it and interested in buying from it and that sort of thing. But um, yeah. yeah, it's all of the above. And as this process goes it's uh what's emerging as a total ecology of like the kind of like a whole system of how we work is how one thing feeds into the other so absolutely uh that i've been now that i've been thinking about the steam camps themselves and this is all up to be developed but initially i mentioned something about an enterprise day the way i'm thinking about it right now is three days design three days build three days enterprise really and we can structure that into the steam camp like that but definitely think about the steam camp as each time we're developing closer and closer to products that are going into the open source everything store so basically an online platform we develop all of that i mean nothing has been said but outside of saying that okay the open source version of amazon where people in micro factories can produce these things uh, for their economies with lifetime design being one of the great features of that and you know in the long term shifting the economy to a totally different pattern so that can completely emerge from the steam camps in fact we can you know we haven't advertised the first steam camp yet but we can say okay out of this maybe we say we're going to try to develop one product like say it's the you know raspberry pi tablet maybe the end goal of that one first event is going to be okay we're going to productize that like open source productize it open source franchise that meaning that we create some assets like an online shopping basket uh, materials about that uh, marketing materials about that or whatever all is necessary and, and also I mean the production engineering with open source tools and all that I mean there's so many parts but the idea being there uh, make that a deliberate process that we're connecting the the livelihood creation to this whole thing because I don't think without this aspect of livelihood creation this is gonna go anywhere um, you know reviewing our progress over the last decade as an open source project you know <laughs> we forgot one thing product <laughs> you know we never never focused on selling anything really it's always been about developing and that's kind of a plague of a lot of projects in the open source world that 
they don't really think about that aspect of marketing and product and sales, right? So we're trying to <laughs> completely shift that because, I mean, it's obvious that we need that <laughs> to happen, right? So, okay. So there's the, there is the Steam Camps incentive challenge we talked about with the incentive challenge being very deliberately set up to developing also the marketing and 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 business enterprise infrastructure for actually hiring and getting many people to do this for real so we're going to do some legwork on distribution and all that that's going to be definitely like absolutely this has got to be a real product now third what, what else is there in this whole package so there's the open source everything store everything from the incentive challenges goes to the open source everything store the products we developed from the steam camps go in there but also the summer so right now we're looking at the three months of summer june july august of next year but maybe reframe that around this is like almost like startup camp so kind of i've been thinking about this startup camp idea these days uh talk to one person actually uh johan from germany who's actually doing work on a micro house design that we're going to build next year um, but he he suggested the startup weekend idea and th after thinking about it, it's like yeah what if we did more of that approach where we invite a certain infrastructure for creating enterprise out of this right so yeah definitely let's think more about that so for the the summer of extreme design build where it's going to be a lot of different builds throughout maybe set up some very deliberate time where we're inviting also entrepreneurial people and business development side where we're getting these products out into the the real marketplace once again to address that that gap uh, so that's that's that now uh, just one more update here um i'm gonna invite all you guys actually like i was thinking about how do we do this what's the near-term schedule but the near-term schedule right now looks like okay october we're gonna pretty much develop the product like whether it's the plotter the electric motor other other things um november would be getting all you guys certified to run it so that means after everybody does their prototypes we ship them here uh, i would approve them and and kind of like uh work out we'd collaborate on further any needed production engineer or anything and then i would ship the kits to everybody like the full kit after everybody sends their stuff in whether it's through virtual or actual real prototypes um, we're going to ship you all that stuff kind of like two or three months before the actual event so that you can practice building the whole, whole thing out um, and get familiar with the curriculum. So that would be like the certification part is where you have to show that you can build the whole program out with replicable results where everybody's producing stuff that works but also on a time frame too. So we're designing everything to be simple. Like it's got, we, if we got a Steam Camp program, it's got to be done very efficiently. So, so the requirements there are pretty, um, pretty significant in terms of the development. So we got like October for development time, November for like certification time. Like this is where we, um, we ship the kits to everybody. So that means I got to produce them here or however we, we do that. And then uh, everybody practices building them out. Now, what else? Part of the production engineering, if we talk about uh, printers, does include the torch table if we're making our own frames. Well, this is for like the, the full kits, not necessarily for the 3D simple. Um, but I was gonna invite people here for November. Like I talked to Michelle about this, who's working on a motor. Uh, like three weeks in November and what I'm gonna try to do is get some money for that to pay people's travel and all that but we wanted to have like a, a crazy prototyping uh, development three weeks in November for anyone that could make it so that's that's also something on the table that I'd like to propose it could be a time where we actually practice the um, practice the actual curriculum you know keep refining that and maybe get into uh, other issues like production engineering of that um, I personally would like to get the torch table up and running I'm gonna build that like basically next month in Oct October part of my deal is to make that make sure that happens um, so that I can produce kits for everybody now the torch table is not necessarily 
needed for the D3D Simple kind of a kit, but it is relevant if, if we're marketing the bigger printers, which, you know, being all open source, I mean, the um, idea is, yeah, guys, you, you, you all can produce them too if you want to. So, so the, the torch table is there for making the production of the entire ecosystem really simple, like especially later if we're doing, the, say, things like the plastic shredder for recycling. Uh, you, you'd need a torch table to cut out the blades if you're doing that and, and other things so uh, that's kind of where that is but definitely uh, shifting that mindset towards entrepreneurial development and first of all it's like uh, to back up a little bit I'm approaching this is like trying to build a team because man this is way bigger than than any one of us and to do that we simply uh, just need to collaborate I mean that's not a question we absolutely got to collaborate so so my my mind sh mind shift here has been it's like uh more from okay we've been doing a project kind of like a solopreneurship kind of a heroic warrior style and it's like right now i'm saying no let's quit that let's reach out to everybody all the people that are doing this work so, so the focus shifts much more to the networking and collaboration part than the solopreneurship part or kind of the heroic warrior kind of deal because this is impossible until we all get together on it uh, so that's kind of like the main mind shift um, the way I look at it here so yeah yeah because the idea of very simple products like even if the steam camps could produce you know like Chris for example has these 3d printed uh, headphones that work so I mean that's a product that's a thing we could be doing things like that um, so there's a lot of different things that are quite simple that with a little bit of refinement and focusing on uh, the aspect of product development we can we can do our little micro factory that's based on the 3d printers but I do think the, the aspect of the, the environmental aspect of making your own filament that's going to be super critical there um, as in terms of creating a really compelling package that's also environmental and and uh, basically the closed loop economies the the circular economy concept putting that in very deliberately into the whole package so let's do it um let's go to i actually want to can we have everybody introduce themselves actually so chris maybe you go first since you spoke already but tell us what you're doing and and how uh, yeah, what, what's your piece in this and what you see as the vision or maybe so maybe see the vision like the the cool stuff about it and what do you see as the the challenge that we're going to face here? So Chris, maybe start with you. Uh, so first, let me uh, introduce myself. Um, my name is Chris uh, Caswell. Um, I run a, a full service of a 3D print shop. Um, I started about uh, six years ago. Um, uh, so in my, especially it's been in um, desktop FDM extrusion based based printers uh, and basically we do a lot of custom fabrication, rapid prototyping and, and that sort of thing. So that's what um, we do as a, as a shop, obviously. Uh, so definitely how, how, what, how I got into it and what uh, um, attracted me about uh, 3D printing was, was open source hardware in, in general. So, uh, so that was what uh, I came from computer science background, and so with 3D printing was uh, digital fabrication, and more generally, uh, was just, um, in uh, from the open source software world, open source hardware world. To most um, immediately, there's a uh, um, working on the curriculum is mostly the 3D printing um, related stuff, and I'm going to be giving out. Um, excited to give out a simple extruder. I've seen probably 25 extruder designs. I'm excited to take this and take across the goal, goal post and um, uh, and also work on the hacksaw and then some other little hand tools type things, which I think like the headphones is a simple product to make but there, and there are even simpler ones i think people see value in their uh, immediate everyday lives i think will be i'll be excited to um be building uh, uh yeah that into the curriculum um i think so your question was what is uh, um one of the bigger um possible issues um or, uh, or concerns and and certainly the, the main one is just uh how ambitious everything is, uh, every single step of it, there's just so much to, to fit in. Uh, um, uh, 
uh, into even a nine nine day thing. So it's uh, like you said, keeping it things to be as small package um, and tight uh, as possible. Uh, I'm seeing time constraint being uh, uh, difficult to get through. Uh, uh, you know, all of that. It's, it's start to bottom. Um, not only how everything works, but how we can all make everything better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're bringing out the point of, yeah, I mean, it's impossible. And for that reason, like I was thinking about, I talked to my advisor on this, and, and he suggested, yeah, bid it out, pay some people to do the missing links. So we'll do that, uh, put some money into it, um, so that all these aspects can be developed more rapidly. Because, I mean, if we're talking about a time frame, yeah, and all of us are busy, um, so we will need all the help we we need on on that. So hopefully we can address that in an effective way. All right, I have, I have a question. Do you, um, as far as the, where the current gaps are, where you're currently looking to, to um, bring in outside help, is it um, is that in the uh, in the curriculum wiki where you have? Uh, I see. So yeah, I started just started on that with the concept of the bidding process. Gotcha. Uh, so in the next like by monday i will have like all the specific tasks like lined up that's my promise for like for like bid process level so it's like this is exactly how you do it how you submit it you know all of that the requirements and all that and so forth some of the requirements like are in this i'm going to share my screen actually if you guys want to take a look at that um but take a look at this so this is product ecology page well the steam the basically in the curriculum document like the development doc so that's the those are all the things that we need to produce like okay not necessarily all of them but like concept design 3d cad uh software bills of materials uh build instructions and data collection like those are various things that we got to do and okay so what's the format from how do we all do that because part of the challenge here is going to be that this is going to explode into uncontrollability <laughs> like unless we have a clear information architecture around us so uh trying to get that well organized as if like if we got like 12 to 24 people working on it even at that level it's like where are all the documents how do we uh orient everybody when we're trying to collaborate on each document so there's this whole level of collaborative literacy that has to happen at this even at this organizational level so but the answer to your your deal your question is like i think that'll be transparent give me like the next few days because really we need to just lay it all on paper as far as okay here's the very explicit task because you know we told you okay do work on an extruder but okay how does it fit to the rest of the system how does it yeah. fit to the wiring what have we done before like all that it's it's all got to be transparent and so yeah 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 but so um like so that just that was my other question i'm trying i'm wanting to, to figure out is what is uh i take just sort of want to take an inventory of what uh 3d printers people have or have access to who are involved in here so i'll take that uh, question to people offline to figure out just because i want everything i'm uh, designing obviously or we're designing what we want to make us uh more easy uh, quickly to be reproduced as possible so um, um right yeah, we'll be following up with you all um, about that. Um, yeah, and ideally, it's like we would build out the D3D simple as the printer so that the production engineering is, a, is uniform across the board, right? That's that's the ideal. But we're not there yet, so it's like, no, that's one of the, the challenges of having a uniform production engineering for everybody. Uh, but that's why, like, in a, at the end of the day, the idea of me shipping kits to everybody so everybody has the absolute identical thing we eliminate any of these variations and all that so that's going to be part of the, the game uh when we do the actual kits for the workshop so it's absolutely uniform yeah mm -hmm. okay so let's let's keep going let's see um demetrius you want to introduce yourself let's see can you hear us or who wants to go next let's see you're muted there, so you'd have to unmute yourself if you want to talk. Um, okay. Or who wants to go next? <clears throat> There's France. Hello, hello. Hi. Let's see, Michelle, you want to introduce yourself, or who wants to go next? William? Who's next?
or uh, Franz, introduce yourself. Who are you? What are you doing here in the Open Source Microfactory Steam Camp prep work? Are you going to try to get some people from Austria? <laughs> How's it going in Austria? Um, Anybody wants to speak up? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear you? Can you hear you? Oh, you're squeaking like a mouse, Michelle. I think you're going to... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're squeaking like a mouse. Maybe you refresh. You're, wow, you're still squeaking like a mouse. <laughs> While you go on, on squeaking, I'm going to show everybody. Um, so Michelle's doing... Uh, the motor part, which is actually coming out really good right now, if you if you haven't seen, um, is the sound okay now? There, oh, there we go. Okay. Yes, there we go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a problem with the sound. Um, uh, I have to keep reloading to get sound again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if other people have the same problem. Maybe there's too much videos uh, yeah, maybe, uh, activated. I don't know if maybe... Uh, cut down. My, my bandwidth is really good here, so I got 100 meg, so it should be pretty good here. But um, I, p I pasted in the chat your, your work on, um, on the motor. But yeah, tell us about yourself, where you are, and, and your visions, and what do you th see as the challenge, you know? Well, the challenge is... Um, uh, making a living out of uh, open source products and workshops as the ultimate goal and now uh, developing the products and the, the workshops to do that that uh, and I'm in the past I, uh, I worked on the universal CNC axis uh, that seems to be uh, going all right in the, uh, in the workshops for the 3d printers uh, and now I want to, I'm working on the motor. I don't know if people uh, have seen it. I've put a, a 3D uh, WebGL version on, online. You can uh, see it on my web blog. Mm -hmm. The link is um, there so you can take a look at it. You can, uh, and yep. Yeah, it's coming together. Uh, I did some tests today with uh, the bearings already. This is how it looks like for the moment. And uh, it's pretty stable, it runs pretty smooth. Um, when I put it on a, a drill, I can get some RPM without vibrations, uh, but it doesn't run on, on its own yet. Uh, there, there aren't any coils in it yet, so <laughs> that's the next step. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still waiting for the magnets and uh, some pieces. Um, yeah, that's about it for the moment. Uh, and I'm also working on um, tutorials for the workflow uh, to make WebG um, 3D WebGL interactive from FreeCats to WebGL. The whole uh, workflow using Blender to export in a, in a JSON format. But more on that later. Mm -hmm. how, f how far are you on those instructional so you can teach, teach us to do that? Um, the, the scenario, the script for the several tutorials is more or less ready, so uh, I can, this weekend I'm going to work on it and I hope to publish like the, the first few parts. I'm going to publish it in parts like uh, FreeCAD, Blender, WebGL, some tweaking. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean awesome stuff. So if you guys want to take a look at my screen real quick I'll just demonstrate for people who haven't seen it if you look at my screen so this is like these 3d explodable you can rotate this so basically this has gotten out of FreeCAD so the model is in FreeCAD wait did you put up your you got to put up your uh, FreeCAD stuff please um, yeah I'm, uh, I'm working on it I'm uh, putting everything 
and uh, and structure several folders because else it's going to be a mess. It's like uh, yeah. a few dozen drawings, I think. Um, and I will want to keep it uh, organized and structured with, with a text with some explanation how uh, uh, how everything works and. Like I said, the impeller is made in, um, in FreeCAD 0.18 and the rest in uh, 0.16, and I want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but this is really good. Like, it's about 70 millimeters, about 3 inches in diameters. It's got 10 magnets right now, and we can vary the number of magnets. Like, we can small as like four magnets for a for a cordless drill or we can make larger for like plastic shredders and electric vehicles and stuff like that so this is like a cool construction set in the process which is amazing okay michelle amazing work um let's do it um who wants to go next anyone want to pipe in introductions Hello. Uh, glad to do an introduction. If everyone can hear me, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, we can, William. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is William Neal. I work at London International Academy here in London, Ontario. This is actually during my computer's uh, 11 class. We have a unit on uh, the social implications of technology, and this is uh, part of the core of our unit right here. So we just did things out of order today. Uh, I've been working uh, for quite some time with open source ecology as the core of our programming here at my school. Our STEM program developed around open source ecology. Uh, we started by uh, building a 3D printer in class uh, seven years ago. And that led to a bunch of things, including making one of the brick presses in China and then having a STEM program uh, develop out of our 3D printing program here. So last year, Marchin and I, or actually last school year, like in June, Marchin and I did the um, Source Ecology STEAM Camp at, at Factory Farm, and it was a really good experience. We got to meet amazing people from around the USA and other places. And uh, 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 in my STEM, I've been working on uh, axial and radial motors. Uh, our students did a very beautiful radial motor as part of their class last year. And that's out of my log. And uh, you can see links to a lot of those things on my log. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, uh, the open source ecology has been incorporated into our STEM activity, particularly one day a week for this year. We work on open source ecology related things directly and the rest of the time indirectly. And also uh, more strongly in my classes. Well, um, looking forward to collaborating with everyone on this larger STEAM camp concept where it's networked across the world and we're supporting everyone to do a really amazing learning process. We're also looking at complex project management in other parts of our STEM uh, camp. And so this notion of putting everyone's name beside an evolving list of tasks is a really interesting thing. I'm sure we'll learn a lot about complex project management as we go through this process. Hmm. I don't know if there's anything else I can say, Margin. Yeah, complex process management. Do you got any links from that, or like what are you using there? Uh, for what our uh, project management, or you mean yeah. for our CAD? No, you said the project management of how you. Is there any particular platform you're using oh. right now that's working for you, or right. you're creating it? Right now, we just started using a, a Google Sheets and Google Document folder, uh, so it's very rudimentary. We just started it a few days ago. So I'm wondering how to go about that. Maybe yeah. there's a better way to do it, like you have on the wiki. But that's something we definitely need because we have high differentiation within all of my classes and our STEM activities. Mm -hmm. So we need some way of doing that. Right now, Google Sheets is doing it, but but it's not going to work ideally. Yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, figure out what's doing on this uh, on the wiki here and see how we can go alongside it. Yep. Yeah, I actually want to cover, like, after everybody uh, goes, I want to just discuss briefly what, what our current, how we do it currently, so that we can take off from there. So, th yeah, thanks, William. Sure. Um, who wants to go next? Who wants to introduce themselves? Emmanuel, you want to go, or who else? Demetrius? Yeah, I think I should go. Hi, everyone. Go um, ahead. So, 
because of the bandwidth and we turn off my camera. Uh, my yep. Basically, mute stuff and all that. So um, I think that I'll be coming in. So I'm based in Nigeria, and um, so I'm basically will be coming in on things earlier with things around firmware and then maybe power equipment. Anything around the training design major things that I would like to uh, make contribution. But then I joined in this, but then one of the things I think I can make a quick contribution to is uh, the project management tool that um, the last lesson was talking about. And I think um, one of the things I think I would want to recommend is Trello. I mean, I use Trello extensively, and I think it has a gives a kind of uh, it helps you know what what someone else is working on, what you should be working on, and it's a good way to visually um, structure your project. So, and I know I missed out on a lot of discussions, so I think I'll just uh, yeah, right. That's fun. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Emmanuel. So Emmanuel's he's into power electronics. He's been in the STEM STEM scene of of Lagos and entrepreneurial scene. So you can take a look at his link on the log, uh, the chat box. I have his link there. Uh, okay, who wants to go next? Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, Israel or Demetrius? Abe, can't hear me. Oh, can you? Sorry, can you hear me now? Who wants to go next? Okay, can you hear me now, right? Uh, I'm Demetrius Norman. I'm down in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, I run NWLA Makerspace, where I'm currently located. Um, and so we're a little bit new to the program. Uh, we were connected by Fred I met up with some of the open source ecology folks and so uh, we've been kind of looking kind of playing double dutch seeing where we can hop in uh we definitely got a lot of common interests uh we recently wrote the written the open source uh movement into our actual nonprofit programming mm -hmm. um, so i actually just submitted a grant uh with that listed as one of our programs um we're also doing some awesome stuff with digital literacy uh that's very low level that um we're looking at some ways, looking at some ways to reimagine that because a lot of people are just doing basic computer technology skills. Whereas I see some of the light fabrication with like 3D printing and the Cricut CNC stuff, I kind of see that as an expansion of digital literacy too. Um, I think digital literacy is a good opportunity to say maybe open source technology tools mm -hmm. should be part of the basics where we're teaching people about computers. Go ahead and shut up open source, you know, ideology and they're with it so they come out of the gate knowing about sharing tools and you know uh, working across communities you know that type of deal and I mean it's for the same purpose um, I do a lot of work with underserved communities uh, we hosted our maker fair in an underserved community um, so we did um, some DIY uh, we got the cricket and cut out vinyl and we made little dollar store cups and we gave them away as like a free make and take and it was an opportunity for people to see how it's made. Um, it's very low tech. You know, cricket's like a couple hundred bucks. The the cups were like a dollar. Um, anybody that's not used a cricket vinyl cutter, it's like a little CNC machine, and it basically just cuts out little vinyl patterns and fabric. So that's kind of like your art and your steam. If you guys are doing a lot of grant writing, um, that's kind of cross up between tech and art a little bit. I have some members that have recently joined that are not really tech people don't really know a lot about maker spaces or open source any of the stuff we're talking about they're into it now because they understand the cricket and they like making shirts for people like i made my shirt uh with that same mechanism uh with like gimp an open source design tool uh i was able to cut it out yeah and so i mean we've had i've had a couple people join and just want to make shirts and bags and stuff and now they're like, oh, what's the 3D printer? So we got some cross pollination going on where we have people that normally would not even be exposed to tech or kind of technophobes. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, they're they're kind of getting into our world with the open source movement, the social impact of that, how these open source tools can create social mobility um, is something that I talk about a lot of my community meetings. Mm -hmm. um, outside of Makerspace, I run a neighborhood group. So, you know, we've got to do some disaster recovery last year. Uh, we had a really bad storm and uh, we had to fabricate some things in the field. Um, this past year, we just changed mayors. So for the first time, we actually have a technology initiative yeah. um, in, in Shreveport, Louisiana. So we have what's called a smart city uh, technology initiative where our current mayor is wanting to shift our, um, our economy from one that's more kind of old school manufacturing that's kind of died out because open sourcing, I mean, because outsourcing. Uh, we had a General Motors plant that closed and it kind of took half our economy with it. Um, and we're big oil and gas in Louisiana. You know how this been, it's very slow. So, you know, there's a lot of jobs that have gone away. Uh, and so this current mayor's administration is seeing technology as a way to kind of revitalize and save our economy and help with some of those unemployment rates. So yeah. uh, I actually shared that community uh, for this incoming mayor, the Smart City Technology Committee. Um, and I was able to get the mayor in our city on board with the makerspace movement and open source. Uh, we had administration came up with design with open source tools. Uh, he open sourced that design to the whole city and so, you know, that was kind of like a maker project coming straight from the mayor's office. And we have a maker in the mayor's office, uh, our city's first chief technology officer, uh, Keith Hansen. Uh, he's a self-taught uh, programmer, no degree background, just an awesome coder, has run a multi-million dollar software startup. He's uh, digitizing all of our city records right now. Uh, he's also looking at ways to implement things like Raspberry Pi, um, you know, uh, different type of maker concepts, the ESP chips, Arduino, coming up with open source IoT solutions for the city use. Um, you know, we're real big on uh, building out fiber uh, and Wi-Fi networks for the disadvantaged that can't afford it. So, uh, you know, we're really looking at using a lot of this maker stuff, uh, kind of squeezing it together with some social good. Um, as far as education, I, I've I've done uh, after-school robotics for years now. Um, I shifted into our makerspace that's 18 and up, um, but uh, we are part of a coalition of nonprofits called the uh, North Louisiana STEM Alliance. We're part of STEM Ecosystems. That's a little bigger. Uh, um, and so STEM Ecosystems is across the entire United States. They encourage nonprofits and you know STEM groups and makerspaces to work together um, kind of collaboratively, kind of like how we're doing now. Um, and so we meet the first Thursday of each month. We were able to partner with them and sponsor a lot of K-12 programming, although we don't do it internally as a space. Uh, programmatically, we do it in partnership with our local science center and uh, several other nonprofits that do everything from social causes to K-12 schools um, and a couple of our local colleges that we're developing a relationship with now as well. Um, our most recent magnet program was at Huntington High School in Shreveport, Louisiana. So we were actually able to build out several classes, robotics that's grown into robotics one and two. Um, we have an actual engineering class um, that we've developed, you know, doing the teacher training, um, you know, raising money, buying the equipment and materials for the class where they can fabricate. So, you know, they have inventor and all the engineering software they need partner with the school's IT director to get that loaded up on our class computers, got more computers for them. So that's kind of actual real class that's modeled around the after school robotics I used to do. Um, and that's actually, uh, we're working on some workforce certifications um, for the students. So a couple of them are working on cybersecurity. Uh, we have a, a PC repair class. Those kids are learning the A plus certification for PC repair. Um, and we've also got them partnered up with one of our uh, partners that does what's called Minecraft U. So teaching them computer coding and programming with the Minecraft platform. So we started that about two weeks ago. And like I said, we, we do a lot of this through collaboration, through people that are already doing amazing things, kind of like open source ecology. 
So we're kind of used to the relationship piece and figuring out what we do well and what we don't do well and what we probably shouldn't do and do through a partner and, uh, you know, learning to work cohesively. That's kind of been our, our main talent since we started up. Um, that's kind of helped us to grow. Um, so our relationships right now include our city mayor and administration, um, a couple of our K-12 schools. We got another high school that we're replicating that same program at. And um, we got about two colleges we're partnering with now. That's uh, Bossier Parish Community College and Southern University in Shreveport. Um, Southern University of Shreveport is developing their first engineering program right now. Uh, BMC has recently developed engineering within the past couple of years and uh, some of the Bossier Parish students have joined our makerspace. Uh, so they advocate for us on campus. They were able to get a lot of their school involved in our maker fair. They had like three booths set up. Um, and so uh, they're very active in our makerspace, some of the college students. And we're looking at, for that to be a real big feeder for what we're doing. Um, we ultimately envision a student pipeline <clears throat> where through our relationships with our K-12 partners and the colleges and us being a makerspace that's a fit for 18 and up adults that may or may not have attended college or go to college, um, we're able to capture, you know, a greater bulk of the community and expose them to making. Um, so um, we, we love the idea of open source ecology. You guys kind of have everything laid out that we're wanting to do programmatically. And um, we like being able to kind of build out a template of what we do here at the Makerspace, which is what this camp program is, the STEAM camp. Uh, it's very close to all the stuff we do. Uh, we like to have like a little junior version of that that we could cut out, give to the school, give to the college, and yeah. those kind of be separate programs of what we're doing. Yeah. What do you think the challenges are going to be? Yeah, that's a mouthful there. What are the challenges in your view to getting the STEAM camps off the ground here? Any thoughts on that? or? Um, the challenges that I'll be dealing with with all those relationships will be honestly a little bit more bureaucratic, um, you know, uh, director to director type conversations, uh, getting people to agree to be a part of things. So um, I know we could do it, um, figuring out the exact time frame that we do it, who's the point person, do we do it at the college? or at the high school or do we do it here on site in our space mm -hmm. uh, more semantics like that I, yeah. I don't think we have a lot of barriers as far as the technical part though. okay yeah yeah hopefully uh, you guys can contribute to some of the, the curriculum as far as right now like some technical people so do you have any particular people in mind that like can you do some of that or you're like way too busy right now or i can do well, I can do some of that. Um, my biggest constraint is I have a 40 hour week job. I work a four by 10 for yeah. Apple Inc. Yeah. Um, I work remotely, but you know, I'm kind of locked into that for 40 hours. I'm off Thursday through Saturday, typically. So I can do like a three day work site type, type of deal. Uh, when I, I've done STEM camps or STEAM camps in the past with uh, Southern University, uh, we generally would run like three or four days and I may take a day off from work. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of squeeze our camp into those days that I'm off work so that I could be there. And then I'll have people coming back, be up and volunteer uh, from our STEM network, uh, teachers and such. So we can yeah. do that. We need to do nine days back to back, like how I saw it written up originally. If it has to be that way, then I'm going to have to tag somebody else in and we may have to, like I say, play around with scheduling and more of the bureaucratic stuff. Yeah, we still have to but, figure yeah, we still have to figure that part out because nine days, that's a lot of time for a lot of people. It's its really practical in the summer, but other times it's kind of hard. So we'll, we'll work it out, see what, see what, uh, we're not there yet really to discuss that specifically, but there may be options of just simply breaking it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking if y'all want to do it, yeah, breaking it up makes it where you can have an industry person like myself because I am an IT person, uh, an engineer by trade, but um, for those of us working in the industry, it is kind of hard because we don't really have that summer off type of deal. Right. Like with instructors, like professors and teachers, um, that's pretty much their time that they're off from school that they can do camps. So maybe if the point person is an educator and they bring us industry folks, kind of rotate us in and out, 
as we're available, that might be a better structure if we want to do it back to back. Maybe we have a, a engineering professor or whatever discipline, you know, yeah. uh, just a technical instructor, we'll call it, uh, or a school teacher that's just really into STEM and wants to make some extra money. Maybe we make them the point person. The way we've done our partnering with the colleges and schools is they generally don't have those hands on technical people that are also instructors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so structurally they have the time, they have the mechanism to get grants and backing, but they may be just as intimidated by a CNC machine or, you know, learning with the students. So what I do is more of a train the trainer where I teach the teacher how to do the tech part that they don't know how to do, just like we do with the kids. And then that allows them to be able to run their own program. They may not necessarily be an expert from that crash course, but they're knowledgeable enough to where they can walk them through the curriculum, do some low hanging fruit type work. And then mm -hmm. on days that I'm available and other like engineers and tech people, we, we can, can come, come in and do more advanced things on like the day two, day three type deal. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that may work. That sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Um, sounds good. Sounds good. So look forward to it. Um, how about uh, Israel and Abe? Do you guys want to pipe in or? Hey, uh, Marchin, this is Israel. Israel, you hear me? Doing? Yeah, I can hear you well. Good. Um, well, hi, everyone. My name's Israel. I'm uh, up in Seattle. Um, I uh, worked with the uh, Open Source Ecology a couple of years ago, I think 2017. Um, I've been a big fan of open source for a long time. Um, one of the main things that really gets me about open source is just the ability to provide access to people who might not have access to it. Um, another thing that is uh, big on my mind is uh, self-development as a person. I, I figured um, open source would be a good way to help people develop their minds mm -hmm. uh, and their skills, refining skills. Uh, but that's that's much harder than uh, than it seems because uh, self development's a lot more internal almost. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've I've kind of wanted to uh, I've kind of wanted to focus on that on the on the on the personal aspect of self development but not just leaving it alone as internal, but also external, right? So it's kind of a feedback mechanism. Um, one of the ways I've, I've considered doing that was through uh, intentional communities. Uh, so I, I've been reaching, I reached out for a couple of years, I reached out to sustainability-minded people and tried to find people who were like-minded. I don't think I was very successful at that, unfortunately. Um, so I think, uh, personally, I've wanted to maybe just kind of go off and do it myself, um, the intentional community side, that is, and that's kind of where I'd like to start going, um, and I, I, I'd, I'd like to reach out to you guys to maybe, like, help with, um, maybe the mentorship side of, of, of um, running a business, I suppose. Um, I think the intentional community aspect of it might maybe address some of the issues that arise from developers maybe losing, um, losing their motivation, I guess, to, to be part of something like this. I, I know from personal experience that it is hard just because, um, you know, you see everybody else doing so much more and, and you think, well, I need to do more too, right? But um, yeah, it's just a hard, a hard issue to address. Is is the personal side of that? Um, but I just want to keep going, basically. Um, yeah. Now, just to pipe in on that, on the, in terms of the, this, how it works. So right now, we're collaborating remotely, but the idea there is like the the summers or build events. Like we want to build in bunch more of that and and have that on a regular schedule so like one of you know all of us can meet and once the the steam camps get going start you know your annual conference for osc and where people where everybody gets together we haven't really done that yet i mean we've talked about 
everyone getting together at a starting a conference of some sort that hasn't happened yet but that definitely would want to be a part of a regular program where people can meet each other yeah right um yeah i think um the support i think there's like more need for for local support um like a concentration of of, of like-minded people yeah. right so that's where the intentional community to me i think would uh be helpful is, is just the fact that maybe you're living with people who are focused on the same thing um it, it, i think it would work much better than than like for say uh, meetups and stuff like that yeah you're you're meeting with people in person but you're not necessarily going to see them every day right um so, so i feel like, like me personally i would need uh need to see people every day basically <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And short of that, the other part that's a direct outcome of look, so once we have the the D3D Simple, the Simple Universal 3-in-1 machine for the Steam Camps, that would be like a dev kit that we can start local meetups with. So that's another part of getting this into the, the real community. People can actually do both meet and do meaningful development work on a more regular basis across all different kinds of cities, the simple meetup concept. So that would be another... Another way, uh, Israel. Do you have any comments on what you know what, as we organize the the Steam camps here? What some of the challenges might be? You mentioned that community part, uh, right? Else? Um, I mean, I guess just the refinement of um, of the materials. Like, so, uh, we I, I know that we've used the the wiki right to to put as much as we can on the wiki, but it's just. Uh, I remember having this issue back um, before is, is everything's just so dispersed that it's hard to bring everything back together and uh, in one location, right? Mm -hmm. And also uh, just just a uh, 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 dedicated uh, chat chat rooms and stuff like that, forums like you were mentioning earlier, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's so many other things like uh, your matrix servers and, and Riot chat apps or Rocket chat apps. Um, I don't know if you guys have any of that uh, currently available for the developers. No, I haven't set, it, set anything up like that. Yeah, I mean, maybe it'd be useful to hear from everybody else what, what everybody else thinks uh, as far as, you know, local or uh, centralized communication. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely the forum part. There's the OSC Workshops Facebook page we should try to try to uh, direct discussion to, but yeah, um, don't know. I think once once we get more more involved, I think some channels will emerge. Any any comments on anyone on that? Uh, I guess one other thing: uh, if if somebody were to set up a a matrix server or something like that, would that um, would you be able to integrate that as part of your Communication infrastructure. Uh, it depends what it is. I don't know. I don't know about it. What, what is that? Um, yeah, possibly. Yeah. The matrix. The possibly. matrix server is a uh, open source. Um, I guess communication infrastructure. It's it's, it's uh, a little more generalized. Um, uh, I don't know. It's just something worth looking into. I think. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No, I haven't heard of that, but that's that's cool. Like, for example, having um, like. I don't know if it's chat rooms on, on various places where you can see that everybody's on there and it's our dedicated channel that as opposed to like right. IRC, like how is this? Um, so what, what improvements does this do over IRC? So Matrix is, I guess, more like uh, they've, they've tried to be more of a substitution for, for Slack. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it looks like they have integrations for IRC. They have integrations for, uh, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. So... They're trying to tie a lot of different things together. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to look more into that as far as how that fits and what the requirements are and all that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, as far as uh, Abe saying, like, should we set up more servers? That's another discussion here. Um, possibly. I mean, if we have the bandwidth here, that might be an option. We have to examine what that means in practice. Um, oh yeah, and um, beyond beyond uh, that too is uh, maybe like some sort of um, 
Yeah, like uh, distributed communications infrastructure. I mean, the fact that we're all, you know, in different locations throughout the world might make sense to have some sort of distributed framework like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's something we can continue discussion on as, as we go forward. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so it's um, it's about an hour of time. Abe, do you want to... Let's continue here. Thank you, Israel. Um, Abe, do you have any comments, or can you, can you talk? Or? Yeah, um, I, I'm Abe. I'm in, uh, in North Arkansas in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I've been, I guess, uh, volunteered with OSC on different projects for, uh, I think, three years now going on. Um, I guess I started just doing little stuff with like the CB press and mostly I just started doing more CAD and trying to do a little more on the printer stuff but I I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere and I don't even have a 3d printer yet although I'm trying to work on that and um, I, I don't have a lot of workshop space but I, I've gotten some experience with uh, free CAD gradually and uh, a lot of the other tools I'm kind of used to that stuff so it's um, Oh, it's good to see see some more uh, teamwork, and it's nice to see the uh, more of a business focus on uh, I think with the team members and so on because I think that'll help uh, move a lot of the the micro factor concepts forward and get some actual iteration to the machines to make them more industrial. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's that's important to head that way, get away from the the hobby machines. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah, but I understand the the, the need for the like the nine day curriculum. It's it's kind of an introductory thing. You've got to have some neat products to to give people there too. So that that's important. Um, see, I guess I've been working on the uh, some of the three D printer stuff. I, I I did some assembly on the uh, uh, the simple extruder recently, uh, just from looking at photos and and things on that. I think. Polyam had lost some CAD files I saw before, so I went back and, and tried to uh, kind of rebuild some of that. Uh, and, and it's pretty well assembled, and I did make some changes, but I, I probably need some input back on it to make sure it's not uh, changing anything. I think I think what I actually changed could be tested and that kind of stuff, but it'd probably be good to have people look over it and see what... Uh, it's done there because I noticed in some of the photos on that simple extruder, it looked like there were some differences that were slight between uh, like the original and the new print. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there, there's probably a room for tweaking there and then adapting that to uh, more types of extruders like the rubber and so on. Yeah. So William's um, uh, and William, are you actually building one out right now? Yes. It's right here, and we're going to be testing it very soon. Uh, we have uh, the frames of two new uh, D3Ds right on our uh, table here, and we're in the process of building the axes, and this is coming along very soon after that, so we'll try to test it as soon as possible. And uh, this is a prototype. It's not perfect, but I'll have to do a few just before we do a final product. This little last piece, we had to uh, file it down a bit just to get it to fit. But it just needs a few little tweaks in the free pattern. It'll work fine. And uh, I've seen Abe's suggestions, and I'd love to discuss further and see if we can try them out in the next uh, few days. Even. So awesome. Next week in the mornings, I'll have time to work on that, I believe. Yeah. No, that's good. So between William, there's Chris and Abe. Uh, yeah, I think you can knock that out pretty, pretty quickly. So, yeah, I don't want to keep this meeting too long. Let me just speak a little bit on like collaboration infrastructure right now and i want to point you to it's actually slide number seven in the working document if you want to take a look at that but like how do we organize all of this as we move forward so number one thing first thing is start a work log on a wiki so uh all of us developing like you can look at march and log and as soon as you have anything any progress log it upload your file so that other people can see it other people can work with it that's rule number one and also like as soon as you set up your log like uh your name followed by log 
we can em embed the time graph because we like to keep keep a time graph of uh, all the effort that's going on a project. That's like the main thing to coordinate everything on the wiki. Now, on top of the, I want to show you the team page right now for so so people have um, I think Emmanuel you mentioned about using Slack and we've used Scrummy before. Scrummy is this super simple embeddable thing. Like if you go to the Steam Camp page uh, for task management and basically a scrum board. Uh, so that's some notes on all the people there. But you see at the very top, uh, you can embed that on a wiki. So the way we like to do is keep it very simple, keep the tools simple and make everything embeddable on a wiki between the Google Docs, um, I mean, files you can upload, things like the Facebook posts or the Scrummy. So this is like the leanest way you can go about management of tasks without invoking any other tools and no other accounts so we the way we like to work a lot is simply using the the wiki as a base blank slate into which you can embed anything including templates like uh one one important thing for developing the technology that we're you know for each project is what we have is with the development template so all the different development steps for an open hardware technology and that uh, and I'll show you more about this in a spec, like once uh, with the request for proposals. But basically, use that as a universal way um, to document things. Under each each of the, um, uh, t take a look at my screen here. Actually, let me let me show my screen there. So here, if you go to an actual template that's embedded in a wiki, you can click on all of these things to show like, okay, how do you do 3D CAD? What's the protocol? What tools do you use? How do you do it? Or how do you make a proper bill of materials and so forth? All this is explained under the hyperlinks under these things. So when we do this, we, we embed one of these spreadsheets and actually th either through Google Docs or actually now a template. Template is actually simpler through the wiki, so I'll, I'll show you how to do that. And then click on uh, w once this is set up through a template you can click on it put all your information there but that will be a little more transparent as we go along here i just want to mention that as a as a core organizing principle because you just simply have to have a certain amount of structure it's all about having the structure and infrastructure um there's the basic osc uh cad free cad workflow that everybody has to has to know um you have to know how to embed google presentations into the wiki and wiki taxonomy that's um if there's any link you'd take a look at the wiki seems like a big sandbox of a mess but actually it does follow logic if you understand it so um wiki taxonomy uh click on that go to the wiki page and it explains basically how just like in software we divide everything into small modules uh but how do you name these things first of all there's the 50 gvcs machines and various um other related projects but there's a particular naming convention uh, where you break things down by machine and by module uh, versioning is a tricky part but once you understand that then you can um, and if you know how to use the development spreadsheet so that's all under wiki taxonomy page maybe you can take a look at that uh, then you can pretty much find all of the there's like 500,000 pages that you can access readily by just understanding those five items and you can pretty much in a few seconds pick out okay this is the 3d printer bill of materials from version 9 the current version or whatever like you can track the the entire history of the project by understanding a simple taxonomy that that is structured and organized according to these basic principles so that's something you, you want to know so that uh, we can all participate in an effective way as we go forward that's just some basics uh, I wanted to go go over and other than this what I'll do next is um, just pretty much make the work to be done much clearer I mean we've broken down like in this some of these documents here it's like this crazy list of things but we don't really know how exactly uh, what the specifications and requirements are for each so that's that's the next piece just getting some of this organizational framework into place here so uh, that's pretty much it uh, for where we are right now and then just go forward and, and developing more of the curr curriculum and then uh, everybody building out prototypes for everybody. Uh, and we'll see, like, uh, I mean, so far we've got a number of people here. We'll see who actually ends up running the first event. I mean, it's going to depend on schedule and timing and and readiness of the people and all that. So that's a, that's a big 
unknown, uh, but we'll, we'll see how we can manage it. But ideally, we'd run something early, like some j between January, and February, probably like late late January, if all goes goes to schedule. So I think uh, I'd like to leave it at this for now. Just a brief introduction to everybody, basically what's going on. Uh, so any other questions at this point, or any any other thoughts? Um, or we can call in and continue on the internet. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, I, I'm assuming we'll do another touch base call in in one two week time, kind of, or as yeah. we get the rest of our communication. Yeah, yeah I think cool. I think we we want to meet next map. Uh, all the specs are laid out for the work, the specific work to be done. And we can focus specifically on just more details of how the progress is going and all the tasks and what's missing and how we can collaborate uh, and coordinate between them. So that should be like in a week or two, we'll meet next uh, and do that. Basically, this whole uh, month of October would be focusing on developing all the curriculum. So that's all in place. So then all of us, we can start assembling it together into a cohesive package. Um, yeah, so everybody's on the same page. That's, yeah, that's about it for now, though. So, yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, and feel free to respond to the, the email that, on the email thread, and we can continue discussion there. Otherwise, uh, I'll be busy just preparing all the requirements so that just give it to all of you so we can get clear on what to do exactly and how it fits together. Okay. All right, guys, so thanks a lot for meeting, and we'll be in touch. Feel free to send emails um, back on the other channel, and we'll talk. We'll talk pretty soon. Awesome. It was great meeting everyone. Great meeting everyone again, and we'll, we'll keep talking. And invite your friends. I mean, if you know any good candidates, that's the number one thing right now. If you know any people who, who belong here talking on this collaborative team, please invite them, and we'll go from there. So take care, everybody. Take care, Steve. Yes.